What's up guys? We're in the garage. Not working on the Yamaha today. Today it's Kawasaki time. Me and Uncle Lyle. Say hi Uncle Lyle. What's up? <laughs> we gotta say a huge thank you to uh, Jeremy Lorenzo at JLS Motorsports. We're gonna show you guys how to install this bad boy. His new KFX 450R stem plate. This thing looks sweet. Replaceable bearing. Get rid of that crappy stock one. Oh, so we're going to get this thing installed, show you guys how to do it. So we are going to remove both the wheels just to make it easily accessible because this is a pretty tricky area to get in. You can see we got to remove these two bolts right here. So this is actually an aftermarket plate. Which one is this one? A Walsh? Walsh. So this is a Walsh one. Allows put it through its paces. It's pretty worn out. So he's definitely due for an upgrade. Um, so taking the tires off will definitely help. And uh, pretty much uh, undo the tie rod ends undo that then there's a nut once you lift this up he's gonna have to undo the stabilizer and then uh probably rear brake line bracket i mean front brake line front bracket. brake line bracket yep so this is gonna have to come out and probably you got to do the top clamp too or can you slide it up enough yep handlebars gotta come All out right. so you just take off the handlebars right just that do i take the whole... take that off All right so taking off the handlebars can lay those forward and that will allow us to lift up the stem just enough to access the nut under here and then pop the new one on. All right, so we got the bars off, as you can see. We got one tie rod out right there. That one's out. We're going to work on the other one. We have Lyle's just got the brake bracket line off. We got the stabilizer mount off. So you took your whole stabilizer out? Yep. Oh, damn easily accessible on the kfx not the yamaha man it's tough yeah on the kfx it has to come out does it all right for the, uh, stem they can lift it you guys can see how tight the stabilizer is on the yfz so the bolts to the clamp are actually back there but you can remove it from that which isn't as bad but the, the kawasaki definitely has a lot of room for the stabilizer all right so we just got the second tie rod removed I'll uh, just undoing, undoing the bolt. Then it's the two screws on the stem plate. One and two. Those are definitely tricky to get to. Got an Allen head in the back and a 10 in the front. Alright, so we do got this unbolted. You can see there it is. I was pulling it up. You do got to take the top clamp off. Makes it a lot easier. And you pull this thing right out. We let her on all the wires. There she is. Okay, so we're going to put the new plate on the stem. On the bottom. That looks good. Let's put it on right here. Nothing's catching. As you can see, yeah, looks good. You want it like that, so the stops yeah. are like that. All right, guys. So just pay attention. Depending on the stem you're using, this is an aftermarket, right? Yeah, LSR. LSR stem needed the longer spacer from the walsh one this is the one he gives you this probably is fine with the stock and maybe other stems but we have to use that one just because this isn't threaded the whole way down you could also use some washers worst case. oh you could yeah you could use some washers but i think it's a little better with one solid piece yep definitely put the nut on throw a pin in it and she's ready to throw back in the quad 
torque it. Torque it down. You know the spec on that, Lyle? Lyle knows it by heart. 27 foot pounds. 27 foot pounds. Might even be set down there. Huh? Nope. That's set to 20, which is the, uh, the swing. Yeah, the last thing you, you used, the last thing you fixed. Boom. I got pins right there, Lyle, right behind you on the floor. Put a fresh pin in it, and then she can go back in the bike. <laughs> That'll do it. Throw the stem back in the quad. There we go. Hold on. There you go. You got Catch the big line. There you go. All right, we got the stem in the quad. So with the plate on, you guys are gonna want to send it down backwards and that'll fit through the frame here nicely and then just spin it the right way and then you can bolt everything back up sure good Lyle just making sure nothing's going to be rubbing saying, yeah make sure no, nothing's rubbing that'll end your day what's that behind that what's that there you go yeah does that go over this yeah it's probably the uh tether yep all right so i can get those bolts back in and that's uh yep that's fine okay definitely tedious getting these two bolts in place just take your time one turn at a time one beer at a time one beer at a time <laughs> you know no light sponsoring this video right there boom we got the back one at least that one we get in with a ratchet which is a little easier a little Loctite. You put Loctite in both of them, Lyle? Loctite and I use lock washers. Loctite and lock washers because these can loosen up, so you got to keep an eye on them. And I got a trick for the back one later to show. A trick for the back one. All right, so Uncle Lyle has a little trick for you guys. Learned this from CJ and Chuck Dawson. GNCC he race He runs guy. a large zip tie around the frame and over that bolt. Just to help it from uh, not loosening up. Lyle says it works, so you better listen. Big old zip tie, look at that thing. I didn't buy it, so that's why it's... <laughs> it was found. There you go, just like that. Good, uh, good little trick. Got the handlebars back on. Lyle's changing a tie rod end since he has it apart. Put a fresh one on there. The other one had some damage on the boot. Throwing the cotta pins back on the tie rod bolts. Just to stabilize your left and she's good to go. And uh, up here tight. Bracket. Oh yeah, the brake line, brake line bracket. We gotta pop that on too. Right there. That is a wrap, folks. You can see that shiny new JLS Motorsports KFX 450R stem plate is installed and ready for action. We'll definitely keep you guys updated on how it does. Lyle's going to put it to the test. Once again, a huge thanks to Jeremy at JLS for hooking us up. I will leave all his information in this in his, in the description. He has those for the Kawasaki. He also has the stem clamps like these, which I have one on that quad. And then he also has, you guys know he has a bunch of stuff for the Yamahas. He's got the signature clear oil cover, which are awesome. Um, so if you guys need any of these great products, shoot him a message. Let him know on when wheel seven and Uncle Lyle sent you. And uh, you guys know the deal. Thanks for watching as always.
All right, guys, we're going to give you a little walk around on Uncle Lyle's KFX 450. What year is it, Lyle? Don't remember. Don't remember. <laughs> so it's either a... Uh, Probably a 2010, I think. 2010. All right, Lyle, so let's go over what you got. Okay, in the front, PRM bumper. This is a custom-made job. That's for the uh, keep gas the, tank yep. goes under it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cut keep that. The, keep the mud out yep. of the radiator. Keep All the right. roofs down. Yep. ARS FX A arms. Yep, which are beefy and awesome. They're the best. Best setup for the KFX. Fox shocks, obviously. Gen 3 Fox Evals, which are also awesome. We got the JLS Just stem plate. Newly installed product. Yep, the JLS stem plate. Precision stabilizer. Yep. Boom. Flex bars. Gotta have flex bars. I run them. I run the soft you settings. Run the softer settings, yep. Because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is an arc clutch. Yep, clutch lever, nice. And pro armor, pro armor, armor tether switch. Tether. He's running the ODI <clears throat> lock-on grips, which pretty much we all run. Pro armor heel guards, Nerf bars. Yep, those are a good combination. Uh, that's an eBay radiator all right oversize yep oversized radiator it's pretty much like the oem one but the oem one isn't as thick in the middle right this one comes out like that yeah. that's where you get your extra uh fluid capacity yeah and they're only like 50 something dollars instead of spending big money on an aftermarket <laughs> coming around to what are the other let's go to i forget what right. this is that was that's... mine right it might be, yeah. That was mine. I don't remember the name. I, I think I got the... it from Bill. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember the the was it PR brand or I think it was Wrath Armor? or Rath? one of the one of those companies. But this was actually my grab bar. Got handed down to a few people. Now Lyle's got it. <laughs> this is the CRF three quarter guard. inch. Yep. This used to be a digger sprocket guard, but Lyle's ground it down, so now it's just <laughs> it's just a round sprocket guard, but he's gonna get a new one pretty soon here. Yep. And then we got the ARS linkage. Yeah, ARS linkage. And the exit shock in the back. Exit shock. Long Good travel. Resi. Yep, long travel. GBC tires in the rear. Oh, yeah. Got all of them GBCs. DWT wheels front and rear. Yep, bead locks. And I got the Kenda Cutter front tires. Kenda Cutter fronts. Two reasons I run those because obviously what we ride is real rocky. Oh, yeah. So you got the six ply. They're really. They are see, tough, super, super tough. You tire. can see the holes in this thing yeah, that do, I've gouged they out. Do take a beating. And it's a little smaller. It's still a 21, but it runs a little runs smaller. A little smaller, yeah. So I feel it turns a little better. Yep. Because the cowie doesn't like to turn. If you've ever owned one. I've owned a couple. <laughs> HMF. HMF and pipe. Looks like the competition series. Full exhaust, right, Lyle? Nope. Just slip just, on. Just a slip on. All right. Looks like you got some CV4 radiator hoses. Nice touch. Both of yep. those. And then this coil is the uh, the Jeep coil. No, the aftermarket. Oh, uh, uh, Dynatech. Dynatech. Dynatech coil. And check out under the seat. Pretty much stock. Stock. I thought you had an FCI. I do. I just haven't, haven't put it in yet. yet. Oh my God. So I got this uh, cover. Yeah. Yeah. And I run the no toil filters. Yep. The good thing about the no toil filters, you clean them with a powder, like yeah, a yeah. laundry yep. powder. So you clean them in a bucket, then I throw them in the washing machine. They come out looking brand new, nice. no solvents. Nice. And you don't have to sit there trying to clean it for a half an hour. He does have an IMS oversized gas tank, which is a must for cross country racing. Yep. Uh, quad tech seat. Quad tech seat, which needs a little bit of love because it's got a little duct tape on it. <laughs> and i do run a rigid light 10 inch yeah we do have lights for our winter night riding i just don't have it on right now he has the uh, lsr stem ars fx stem clamp custom start button that's an on one wheel seven custom yeah <laughs> i think that's pretty much it right lyle uh prm skid in the back prm swing arm skid you guys can see right there i modified it to run the yeah so we can run the sprocket CRS. guard still yeah and the other good thing about this sprocket guard if you're running the big three on the kawasaki you have to drill out 
your uh, sprocket hub. Yeah. And put a Honda sprocket on there with the 10 inch bolts. Yeah, yeah. This comes with that. them. Yeah. So if you order this, you get the bolts with it, you drill it out, you're all set. You're yeah, not so gonna break for all bolts. you KFX guys, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know I did that with mine. You gotta drill out the hub to take the Honda size bolt. It's a little I think it's what a 10? 10. 10, yeah. So you go from the 8 to the 10, which definitely makes a big difference. And I do have the up case saver too. It's a poly oh, yeah, case yeah. saver. So he's got a poly case saver on there. Too bad uh Glenn didn't make one for this. I know they would they would, but they need uh they need about fifty guys to commit to it pre order and they would make one. So So I'll send all hate mail, yep. I mean requests <laughs> <laughs> to Glenn and yep. let him know how he guys it want. It could happen we get, if we can get fifty guys to commit, they will make one. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely drop a comment. That's, that's pretty, pretty much, much it, right? It. Yeah, so that's it. So Uncle Lyle's KFX 450R.